Hi folks, this is James Ramsey here with Ramsey Innovations. Uh, just wanted to show a little bit of my version 2 uh, newest nano sized quadcopter here. It's um, the version 1 I did. Basically it uses the uh, InfraX 8.5 millimeter cordless motors. It's got the TX5805 with the dipole I make here. I'm running the Traxxas QR1 props on this. And uh, I got a wide angle lens for the camera for the, for the 5805. And um, what I did on this one was solid booms here. You can see it's one piece, one piece there and one piece there. They're notched in the middle. And then uh, they get epoxy together. And uh, it's really strong, extremely strong setup. Um, it could be a little lighter weight in the frame department there since those are solid. That's um, 5 millimeter by 6.2 millimeter <clears throat> on those guys. And then it's laminated with uh, Texalum glorified fiberglass. Got ants running around everywhere here. Um, so this new one here uses hollow quarter inch by quarter inch booms. You can see they're turned on their side like a diamond. And definitely saves a little weight in the, in the boom department there. But uh, it also allows me to run the wires inside, whereas on this one I had to uh, cover them up with the uh, textile in there. So anyway moving along here got the carbon fiber on here and with this one you can see how much higher it sits so that you can hopefully land in the grass and keep your blades up out of the grass and be able to take off so i also got a camera tilt on this one and i found these nice little rubber grommets to put in there they seem to help but anyway so you can tilt the camera here depending on what you're wanting to do and then um, I might come up with some kind of little locking tab for this or something right now it's just using the tension of this on here to hold it in place and it seems to do just fine but you know, maybe for little future modification I put a little locking tab there or something but you can get a decent range of motion with it if you do a lot of fast forward flying you can point it up a little bit and that way it kind of levels out when you're in forward motion or if you want to get more of a aerial view of something you can tilt it back and have it down down more but I like to keep it about level maybe a a little bit of an up pitch if I'm doing some proximity flying or something. <clears throat> anyway, so I figured out a way to hold this down. I just made these little, little aluminum wire here. So if I get my camera to focus that close. But um, it's just like a little hook thing that goes around the boom there. And then it allows me to take a band from the front and then stretch it over the top and really that's all you need to hold this down it's got a nice um, rubber seal around there that holds pretty well so so anyway I got my uh, TX5805 antenna sticking up through there got the InfraX motors and what I've done is turned the motor holders upside down and adapted them to hold the motor in that position and um, you know you have to rework things a little bit with that because it won't work just flipping it you'll end up p pinching the wires from the motor you gotta put like spacer in there and stuff so I went ahead and did that <clears throat> and then I capped off the bottoms with a little piece of uh, I don't know if you can see that well on this camera or not but a little piece of carbon fiber in there on each one of those and then basically I modified them so it uses um, the tension of a zip tie to hold the motor on so really in the field um, you could use the little micro plugs inside the bottom 
where the spacer is here um, it moved from the board into there or a small other brand of micro plugs that's out there and um, have some motors pre set up uh, with a shortened wire on it with the opposite plug end on it and then you can do it in the field change by just changing the zip tie really and you just pull the motor out uh, unplug plug in the new motor and put a new zip tie on it um, so it really doesn't get much easier than that I think makes it pretty simplified yet it's really strong um, basically your standard three millimeter by three millimeter square boom uh, still has a section um, that extends from this by about three quarters of an inch into here and um, what that does is it goes into the hollow section there and then it's locked down with a little screw on the bottom uh, I also put a little bit of like a temporary adhesive in there to give it a little more torsional rigidity and um, but it will break loose if you are trying to change it or pull it out of there for any reason um, so it's not permanent by any means what else here these legs uh, they flex quite a bit it's a strip of carbon graphite here um, they're like springs you know this thing will like there's top but it soaks up all of that when you come down pretty well um, let's see here what else all right so to take off the top cap remove this obviously you just need to unhook here let's see if I can do it one-handed while holding the camera there's one side and then that band stays right there on that arm so you're not fumbling with screws or messing around with trying to have some kind of uh, thumb screws or something like that to hold the cap down it's all contained so it might be a little harder on the angle here with me trying to hold the camera okay here we go one-handed okay so then we can just pull up on this on the back of it and there you go and then inside I've got the TX5805 and then I did a quick plug for my camera assembly there so I can later I'm hoping to be able to sandwich in the board from an 80816 that I just got and um, and have that connected instead of the camera there so that's why I put that plug in there I can just quick change and then run the wire through now I have to use a little extension for the 808 you gotta get that separate it's a couple bucks so I went ahead and ordered that um, it's a two inch extension for the camera there so that should give me enough room uh, to work with so and then I'm gonna have to do some kind of like a relief cut or like a, a slit in there so that you can put the uh, ribbon cable from from that through there and then um, the extension has a point in the center where it, it's bound together with a piece of heat shrink so it's kind of like already uh, circular so I could just leave the hole and then put some relief cuts that'll allow the uh, ribbon to slip through then we could put some pressure sensitive adhesive tape uh, aluminum adhesive kind of like I used on this thing to seal up the vents um, if you wanted extra added like uh, security from getting any kind of water in there or anything like that and you just slap a piece of that on there should be fine <clears throat> And then inside here, I got the board underneath the deck right there that the battery sits on with a piece of uh, Velcro on there. And then I just use carbon graphite strips spanning across the sides in the front and the back. And then a piece of um, carbon fiber there to keep anything from touching the board, especially the pot. You don't want that messed with or anything like that. You want it to stay where it's set. <clears throat> so I'm getting ready to do this maiden flight here. Um, I set the pot to where I thought it would be knowing what the AUW is on this aircraft here and being that this one is right close with that um, in fact we'll see what they weigh in at right now um, pretty sure that this one's gonna end up being it's a little bit more 
um, with the addition of the stuff inside for the battery tray and everything it ended up coming out a little bit more than this other one here so we'll see what the flight times look like but here's the scale so we're gonna throw a cup on there tear that out okay this is the battery I'm using with both of them Turnigy Nanotech 750 with the wrapper removed piece of velcro is on there so we'll throw that in 18.1 grams right there so here's the first version prototype if you will whatever uh, comes in right at 70 flat and all you do with this one here is you just plug it in and stick the battery on the bottom it doesn't go inside like the like the new one which is okay for rain flights and stuff but um, I wouldn't want to land in too deep of a puddle or something like that with the battery plug exposed um, so okay battery still in there we're at 18.1 let's throw on this guy here and yeah two and a half grams more let's make sure it's stable up here wait for the breeze two point yeah it's a little breezy here I'd say about two and a half grams more so maybe there are some places I can look to shed some weight from this thing um, and then doing the 808 I know is going to end up adding some weight and basically I want to put a cap at 80 grams because I don't think it's going to be um, with the batteries we have now it's going to be acceptable flight times if you're going to go anything over 80 grams and that's just a speculation on my part but um, considering that I'm getting consistent seven seven and a half and if I'm just hovering around eight minutes um, with this but I mean even the most aggressive flying I've done with this it uh, still holds out to seven solid minutes um, with a little to spare usually um, so you know given that I wouldn't want to go obviously too much more than what's on there right now so we'll see how it fares with the 808 once I get to that point where I can test that um, I'd really like to have that on board SD recording though uh, so I may look for some ways to shave some weight on this thing a little further I know in this first um, casting of this top cap and this back section underneath where I have this sticker right here it uh, had gotten some bubbles and the, the resin didn't seem to extract very well in that particular point in the vacuuming process um, I don't know if it was because I was using a temporary positive in the mold um, and that wasn't really as strong as what I would use for a permanent one which I will be using on all subsequent ones um, so it was just kind of as a test uh, so that will maybe drop our weight a little bit. Um, I know the top cap before I put the rubber seal on it and everything was right at uh, 2.4 grams and the bottom one was at 2.1 I believe or 2 um, before I did the rubber seal on it and stuff. So maybe I can drop that top cap weight down to closer to you know one and three quarters and then get the bottom one down a little bit more I don't know um, or do some trimming here and there or something uh, but that would be my first place I would probably go to try and save weight um, I know everything else doesn't really weigh much so um, it's just all collectively uh, adds up <coughs> but um, I know there's the, the metal shielding on the TX5805, um, that I don't know how worth it it is to try and take that off really to save the weight there or what, I'm not sure exactly what it weighs, I would assume between a gram and two grams, um, but who knows. So yeah, I've already direct soldered all the points there so to save the weight um, for the motors so that saves a little bit um, I left that plug because I want to be able to take the top all the way off 
just like anybody probably would for you know any purpose if you wanted to fly non-fpv just line of sight you could just totally remove this top part here stick a battery on the top there and then uh you could just fly it like that if you wanted to if you wanted some protection or something you could you could pop the btx out of here and just pop the cap back on or whatever but you know you got options there at least um but anyway so uh yeah maiden's coming up real soon here and um just charging batteries and uh, I'll go ahead and post all that up as soon as I get it done. Alright guys, take it easy.